this video. In this video, let us see the multi vibrators, multi vibrator types, single stage uh, A stable oscillator, crystal oscillator are going to be discussed in this video. First, let us see what is a multi vibrator. Multi vibrator is a kind of oscillator circuit which produces rectangular pulses, or we say square wave is the output of the multi vibrator. And multi vibrator is the name originated from the type of waveform it is going to produce, which is rich in harmonics. And multi vibrators are again which will be having a positive feedback with that. And it will be also having some active devices within the oscillator circuit which are going to be operated as switches and alternatively cut off and driven into saturation region. Let us understand the different types of multi vibrators now. There are three types of multi vibrators one is a stable multi vibrator, another one is mono stable multi vibrator, and the third one is bi stable multi vibrator. In the first one, a stable multi vibrator, as the name itself says, it is going to produce a stable continuous square wave, or the output will be a continuous train of pulses, we are going to say. And it will be also referred as a free running multi vibrator. Free running multi vibrator means it is going to produce a free continuous signals or we say it is a train of pulses. And then what is monostable multi vibrator? Again here in the name it is given as monostable means it produces a single output pulse and it is also referred as one shot multi vibrator. And here it requires an extra signal to make that output as a pulse which is called as a trigger pulse. Once the trigger pulse or the control signal is given it is changed its state from 0 to 1 or we say it is in the stable state and it will be changed to unstable state and after some time it will come back to the stable state again. This is mono stable multi vibrator and then we have multi vibrator uh, which will be named as bi stable multi vibrator. Here it requires two stable states are present in the output of this such as uh, 0 and 1. So, here we require two trigger pulses to create this square pulse means in the first trigger pulse it will be uh, uh, the output will be going from 0 to 1 and it will be there in that state after giving the second pulse it will be come back to 0. This is bi stable. So, in the name itself we can say bi stable means it requires two it, it will be attained two stable states with two trigger pulses. Now let us go to the next topic that is single stage A stable oscillator. It is A stable oscillator. A stable oscillator in the sense in the previous uh, topic we say A stable means it will produce a continuous square wave. Now let us understand how this circuit works. So it is an op amp, an amplifier circuit and um, with an amplifier circuit we should have a positive feedback. So this is the positive feedback circuit which is connected to a positive terminal of the op amp. The, so, this will be act as a feedback network and this will be act as an amplifier. Here in the single stage A stable oscillator we will be having one capacitor here. So, this capacitor is the heart of the circuit here. When this capacitor charges the value will be rise to 1 and it discharges it will be uh, coming back to 0. Like that the output of a pulse will be generated in a, a stable oscillator here. Now let us assume this C is initially uncharged, uncharged in the sense the value at the capacitor will be 0, it is not at all having any charge. So at this stage voltage at the inverting input terminal here it is less than the voltage at the non-inverting input terminal. Why? Because there will be an offset voltage here at the output of the op amp since there is no voltage at the input terminal. By considering that if we compare the voltages at the inverting and non-inverting terminal, let us treat non-inverting terminal is greater compared to the voltage at the inverting terminal since this capacitor will be having 0 volts. In this case what happens? Because of the voltage available at the in a non-inverting terminal output will be a non-inverted output means output will be rise to plus VCC right and this value will be stayed for some time 
because of v out is high this path you can observe here through r there will be current flow to the capacitor this high voltage at the output this will make a current flow through this resistor the negative uh, terminal uh, resistor r and this capacitor will be charged once this capacitor will be charged what happens the terminal voltage in the negative terminal or we say the inverting terminal voltage is greater than the non inverting terminal now because of this capacitor charged like this plus minus so because of this plus terminal of the capacitor here this voltage is more compared to the non inverting terminal voltage because of the inverting terminal voltage the output of the circuit reduces to minus vcc and this voltage will be stayed for some time this capacitor will be started discharging now once the capacitor becomes discharged the voltage at the inverting terminal is coming to zero or we say minus vcc now if we compare the output is also minus vcc and it will take a path to discharge and the output voltage or the voltage divider uh, uh, output which is available at the non inverting terminal is greater compared to the inverting terminal now why because capacitor is discharged that's why as compared to the inverting terminal non inverting terminal will be having more potential again voltage rises to plus vcc this process continues again capacitor will charge when the output voltage is maximum then capacitor will discharge in the negative output again it will be charged and discharged this is how the output of the a stable oscillator is going to be obtained as a continuous strain of pulses and if you write the upper cut off as well as the lower cut off or we say upper threshold or the lower threshold voltage available at the input of this op amp this is vcc into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 and the lower threshold is minus vcc into r2 divided by r1 plus r2 or if you apply a voltage divider rule over here by considering this v out as plus vcc and minus vcc we are going to get these two expressions and the time time period time period means from here to here what is the time taken by the oscillator to get one complete cycle means this is t 2 cr natural log of 1 plus 2 into r2 by r1 this is what the time period of the signal what we are going to get as output and then we have crystal oscillator crystal oscillator is again a kind of oscillator where we are going to use a crystal within the device in a oscillator circuit we will be having a crystal here in the circuit you can observe this x1 is a crystal uh, here they have consider it as a quartz crystal this quartz crystal what happens it is going to vibrates when the potential difference is applied when we are going to uh, apply the voltage across the crystal the uh, crystal is going to vibrate this crystal can be related to the electrical quantity as a rlc circuit and when this crystal vibrates that phenomenon will be called as piezoelectric effect because of the potential difference the crystal vibrates here the kind of crystal we are going to use is quartz crystal and uh, that effect is piezoelectric effect so the frequency of oscillation the output will be a continuous wave here the frequency of oscillation is depending on the size of the crystal as well as the cut of the crystal cut in the sense we are going to take the crystal wafer and the wafer cut will be taken to manufacture this uh, crystal or to make this crystal that will be uh, called as crystal cut and the physical size will be representing the or uh, frequency will be depending on those two and these crystals are the crystal oscillator uh, which will be connected in a positive feedback manner and this transistor will be uh, making the amplifier circuit here it is again giving an continuous oscillation what is the amount of frequency we can get from these crystal oscillators means if it is operating in a fundamental mode if fundamental mode the output will be from 100 kilohertz to 20 megahertz means the high frequency generations can be made using these crystal oscillators and if it is operating in a overtone mode or overtone operation we can expect an output of 20 megahertz signal or 100 megahertz signal from the output of this crystal oscillators you can observe this is the practical crystal oscillator device we are going to get practically 
So on this it is mentioned it is going to give 4.0000 megahertz of frequency. This is what crystal oscillator is. Thank you.